Good morning, everyone. 8.30 on this Thursday, April the 9th, reporting to you live from the Kennedy Space Center, Cape Canaveral, Florida. There on the launching pad, the Columbia Orbiter of the Space Shuttle Program, due to be launched at 6.50 tomorrow morning. And things are going well here. Weather looks good. They're in T-minus 12 and holding now because they've caught up with most of their work. The countdown will resume this afternoon at about 4.20, we're told, Eastern Time. I'm Tom Brokaw here reporting to you live from the Kennedy Space Center. Let me say good morning to my friends back in New York, Jane and Jean Willard. How are you? Good morning, Tom. Another business coming up in this half hour. Rhoda Barrett will be here. Uh, they like the Carol Burnett uh, happy ending so much. Another celebrity has filed a libel suit. Rhoda will have details. Nancy Foreman is going to be here with the scrapbook of the future, a videograph. And let's get back to, to Tom for more business in Cape Canaveral. Well, as I, uh, as I was just saying, things are going extremely well here. And as you might expect, Jane, this is not only a big piece of space technology that we're about to witness, but you're also seeing a big part of the American sociology, uh, sociological scene here. The American pop culture in the form of souvenirs of almost any kind that you can describe. Ike Siemens has done a report for us now on the resurgence of Cape Kennedy. This is the first manned space shot in six years. Here's Ike. There haven't been crowds like this at the Kennedy Space Center since the Apollo moonshots ended in 1975. For days at the center's gift shop, people have bought thousands of dollars worth of space shuttle souvenirs. Everything from toy models to make-believe spacesuits to baseball caps, the most popular item for sale. Some Space Center employees have cashed in on the Bonanza too. One group has set up shop in a truck just outside the gate. It's selling T-shirts to commemorate Friday's launch of Columbia, the 75-ton spacecraft, which is about the size of a DC-9. There's an excitement here that has been missing for a long time. In the early days of American space travel, there was a non-stop party, and people profited from it. 72-year-old Helen Kendall's Moon Hut restaurant was popular. The big seller was the Moon Burger, complete with an olive on a toothpick to represent a satellite. She hit on hard times, but now Helen is making a comeback, thanks to the space shuttle. I'm going to have a shuttle switch sandwich. It's going to be a steak sandwich with onion rings and all the trimmings. Helen launched the shuttle switch yesterday. The final countdown is underway to determine if customers will go into orbit over it. Ike Siemens, NBC News, Cape Canaveral, Florida. And for most of the NBC crews, at least, this is the uniform of the day down here at uh, Kennedy Space Center. We look like we're members of some kind of a SWAT team from the National Broadcasting Company and from NASA. Now let's go back to New York. I think that one was my size, Tom. We've got one for you, Jane. Nope. For 20 years in this country, the word astronaut automatically meant a man, but that's changed. In fact, beginning in 1978, NASA began accepting the first women astronauts. There are now eight out of the 81 members of the astronaut corps based in Houston. One of the first half dozen to be accepted is Judy Resnick, now 32 years old, a native of Akron, the holder of a doctorate in electrical engineering from the University of Maryland. She is single, she plays the piano, and she's a runner. She's not quite a pilot. I guess you fly in the back seat of the T-38s, right? That's correct. So you have certain aeronautical skills and so on. Yes. But when you when you were a little girl growing up in Akron, Ohio, did you say, gee, I'd like to be an astronaut someday? No, I really didn't think about it until uh, right about four years ago when NASA announced that they were looking for astronauts who would be uh, engineers and scientists on the space shuttle. And it was accidental that I heard about it, and I just took a chance and applied. Yeah. But once you got into the program, wasn't there a little bit of resentment or a little bit of male chauvinism that was demonstrated to you? There's a very male kind of fighter pilot world that you were entering. Not at all. As a matter of fact, I think everybody leaned over backwards to make sure that we were treated as equals right from the beginning. Is there anything in the space program that women inherently do better than men? Uh, not that I can think of. We're smaller, but yeah. that's about the only thing. But that hasn't changed anything? No. You had to change the uniform some, though. You did have a little talk with them about that. Well, the only thing that they had to do was make a smaller size pressure suit. Uh, one size fits all, small size for men doesn't fit small women, so we now have an extra small. Okay. We want to show some uh, videotape of some of the physical training that you have to undergo at NASA. You can talk about that a little bit as we take a look at it now with Judy Resnick. It's a, it's a pretty tough program. Were you prepared for this, for the physical difficulty of it? Well, it's not really so difficult physically. Uh, it's a lot of new things, but they lead you through it by the hand. This is uh, 
a, a demonstration of uh, Now, wait a minute. Red. That doesn't look like a lot of fun for a Saturday afternoon to me. I don't know about you, but... Well, you have to learn how to survive uh, in case you have to get out of a, an airplane in a parachute, and they teach you step by step how to fall, how to be dragged. Uh, that's the impact you feel if you go through an ejection seat, and it's really not as bad as it looks. Uh, they, they show you how to fall into the water by, instead of letting you fall the first time, they let you slide down a slide wire. Like I say, they, they break you into it gradually. Were you a tomboy when you were a kid? No. You weren't, and you and you took to this right away. You like it. It was. Fun. What's the best part about being an astronaut? Uh, everything. You just like it all. Yes. You get to exercise your training, electrical engineering, and expand your knowledge enormously. I would think. Yes, I think the best part, uh, technically, is that it's a very well-rounded approach to uh, science and technology, and we get to do a little bit of everything and state of the art, and it's always a challenge. What happens when you meet a man who's not in the space program and doesn't know who you are, and you say? I'm an astronaut. Does he say, yeah, you're too cute to be an astronaut. Come on, little lady, you can't be an astronaut. I just tell him I'm an engineer. <laughs> you don't tell him you're an astronaut? Not unless he asks. You really, you mean when you, when you meet people for the first time? What about the whole business about social relationships? Does it make it, are some men threatened by the fact that you're an astronaut? Uh, I don't know. If they are, they're probably not my friends. Yeah. But all the people that I know, it doesn't bother them and, and, uh, you're a professional person, whatever you do, whether you're an astronaut or a doctor or, a, or anything. Are there discussions in Houston about what happens when men and women go into space for the first time together? The dis there's not discussions among us. Yeah, there, are, there aren't any discussions or preparation for the social impact of that and, well, you know, we're going to be talking about it after all if you're up there in some kind of a prolonged space mission and there may be even relationships that will develop between men and women. Well, I think from our point of view, uh, since we're so used to working together professionally that we look at each other as professional colleagues on the ground and in orbit and whatever, and, and we view it that way, period. Do you think the time will come when there will be romance in the outer space, though? Oh, gee, I really couldn't tell you that. <laughs> but people have just right for right now just a wholly professional attitude about it, and NASA has not begun to form any kind of a seminar or any kind of a training program for people to deal with that publicly or otherwise? Oh, I don't, not at all. Uh, it's a career to us, and we, we treat it that way, and so does NASA. Okay. When do you expect to go up in the shuttle? Oh, it's going to be a few years for, for us who, who are relatively new, but it's worth the wait. You'll be patient enough. I'll try. Okay, great. Judy Resnick, nice to have you with us this morning. We'll see you tomorrow morning back here as you help NBC News with its coverage of the launching of the Columbia Orbiter. We'll be back right after this word launch, if all goes well, and we have no reason to believe it won't, of the Space Shuttle Columbia, will be on the air at uh, 6 a.m. Eastern Time for an extended Today program. I guess by the time the Today program regular edition goes on the, on the air, uh, the Columbia ought to be on its way. Tom Brokaw will be anchoring NBC's coverage uh, throughout the Today program in the morning, and he and John Chancellor will be sharing duties. Tom has been um, reading up a lot about the space shuttle. Uh, he knows all the acronyms, what they stand for, and probably a little bit of physics to be thrown in. We've got a picture here of, uh, of the uh, Houston uh, control room. And while there isn't a good deal of activity to be seen now, I assume it's going to be very, very busy this time tomorrow morning. Uh, there's no reason for them to be there now. It's a trifle busier even as we look at it, than our own control room in the other room. But then that's a story for another day, isn't it? <laughs> Any event, uh, gentlemen, uh, will you all be here, or I'm on my own tomorrow, aren't I? You're on your own, but we're all going to be watching, watch Tom and watch the blast off. I mean, at 6 o'clock today, show, that may be a tickle of the future, you know. Okay. A lot of people watch. They'll say, hey, the that's a good idea for every day. The dawn of a new era the in The dawn space. of a new de era in the today program, yeah. Yeah. Well, 6.50, I believe, is the launch time, right? 6.50 in the morning. Yes, indeed. It's supposed to be about 80 degrees and uh, should be mostly sunny when very light winds. So. Well, sometimes, even if it's a little cloudy, they look for that window, and I can remember being small and trying to envision panes of glass through which they were going to shoot uh, this or that rocket. But uh, they say the weather looks good for, for uh, 6.50 in the morning. So far, so, so Get up a little early, set your alarm clock, and be with us before you go to work tomorrow. You can go to work with the knowledge that uh, the Columbia is is up and away. I've never been present at a launch, but Willard has yes. been. Yeah. And it, it's, uh, it's, never forget it. It's a mammoth sight, huh? It is a most impressive sight. Does it sight. sound and feel? Does it, does it, does it rumble and, and shake the earth? Unreal. The earth shakes and the fire comes out of the bottom of the rocket, and you see it lift off, and it's a dramatic moment. I wept. I really did. Right.